Hi, I'm Randy Varsava. Let's do business for God. Let's open in prayer. You all pray with me. Don't don't leave me alone. Pray with me. Toko kushi da kai da kai da ba 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 ramana da ko sa sta ka ta da kai ta da da ka ta da da ko ina ba da ba ramana da ko jen sta ki a ko ko mi mi an da nigi na da da kai ta ti ki da kai sta so so. Niem sniem niem na 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 da ka ta da kai shi shi sta ka ta da kai ko ko i ba ba ramana da da ba da da ko shi 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 shi. Na 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 ba da da kai ta da kai ta da kai ta da kai ta da kai ko i ti ki a ba ba i ta da kai sta shi. Namba ba 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 de de ko de de ko de sho ho ho ma ma ya ha ya ya ka ha to to ko de sho ho the lord wants to show you new things new things today that he hasn't shown you before things that are new to you Uto koko koko shina ma 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 na 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 ka de ki ki te ki da ka inga ir ke da para ma na na ko ye shte sta sta sus Noms de para manda de kishin stick it a kaya mama no oh ho ho ya he he wants we he desires to show you new things exciting things oh me mama manda de kata de kike de kish de shastas I'm still but I'm on that acoustic God is a now god as in now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen we call things which be not as though they were that's what we do when we do that we are acting in the image of god we are being imitators of jesus when we call things into being use your words like I've told you before, use your words like a mechanic uses his wrenches and so on. Use your words like that to build what is it that you want to build, that you are building in your life right now. Use your words. And use your words to thump the devil. Use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Put the sword in your mouth. Torment the devil. Torture the devil every day with the word of God. It's very, it's tormentful to him. It's painful to him. It's painful. If you've never clued into that before, you got to understand that when, you, when you're swinging that sword of the spirit with your mouth, with your words, it's physically painful to him. It hurts him. H-U-R-T-S. It hurts him. He doesn't like to be hurt, so he'll run off. You can run him off. With your words, with your faith. Talk about that around your kitchen table. I said, talk about that around your kitchen table. You know, hey ma, what pa? You know what that guy said? You know, talk about these things around the table. You are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. God goes about the earth looking to see to whom he may show himself strong. And every day you say to the Lord, show out right here, Lord. Sh show out right here. Look no further. Right here. It tastes so good to be a cut of education, stick it, get him on my mind. Oh, I got it rolled around in my spirit like God's going to drop a bomb. Oh, yeah, kick it, get him on my mind. I'm going to get it, 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 Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. And the Lord says to the enemy, he says, Don't touch my church. Don't touch my church. Don't touch Israel. Israel is the apple of God's eye. Don't touch Israel. Don't do that. 
bad idea. The word says, I will, concerning Israel, I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. Um, I've seen some of that curse stuff. I wandered into it a time or two in decades past, and I don't go there anymore. Believe me, it's not a good place to go. It's a good way to get it for a guy to get his rear end kicked around the block, if you know what I'm saying. Don't go there. Just stay on God's team. The Lord says, who was on the Lord's side? Who was on the Lord's side? Always identify with that. You hear uh, dialogue about identifying with things today well identify with God answer him in the positive when he says who's on the Lord's side you know raise your hand and say right here, right here Lord here I is I'm, I'm, I'm ready willing able right here I'm on the Lord's side identify with that identify with uh, being on the Lord's side Om sticky, help me out here. Help me out. No It's right there. It's right there. It is right there. It is. I yes, it is right there. Took a coach cake to the kick in the manamani under the cut the cash to shush. Just imagine in your mind's eye, God looking from heaven and seeing the threats against his people and people on the earth. And imagine, if you will, God observing that and laughing and laughing at the evil ones and the threats of darkness. Imagine God laughing, laughing at those things being said by the enemy. Imagine him laughing, laughing at that stuff, dismissing that trash with his laughter. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. You say that too. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I will not fear. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Those of you that are listening to this, that have faith, and those of you that have great faith that are listening to this, look in the word, the story of Ananias and Sapphira, and tell that story to three different people to, uh, this week. No, over the next two weeks. Say that story of Ananias and Sapphira to people in the next two weeks. Say it. You hear what I said? Do it. Talk about what happened there. Tell somebody, no less than three, the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel. What happened there? When the fire of God came down, I'm not telling the whole story. When the fire of God came down after all the false prophets had been doing their dog and pony show, got no results. And uh, Elijah said to the false prophets, uh, you guys done yet? Uh, you know, I see the old sundial here says, you guys must be done. And he made fun of them. 
I heard a Hebrew scholar, he, he talked about that in, in more depth, which a lot of the church could not handle, by the way. And he said, uh, when Elijah spoke to those guys, so that some of you, that are, if you're wearing panties, uh, I'm talking to the men, maybe this might scare you, but probably not my crowd. But I heard a Hebrew language scholar, he said that when Elijah was railing on those guys, he used uh, salty language, shall we say. He wasn't coddling those guys. I think he was cussing them out. Oh, 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 a godly prophet, would he do that? Oh, honey. I've been on set, television sets, before the cameras were rolling, and I've seen some of that for myself. I asked the Lord about it, and the Lord said, those guys are walking in skin, same as you are, and they have to exercise patience with the trash around them, being the devil that is, the same as you do. And occasionally, you will hear your faith heroes use salty language. And the Lord told me, he said, doesn't, the Lord told me that it doesn't scare him at all. Okay? So don't get all bent out of shape about something like that. I had a friend in jail ministry. And I told this friend, because the Lord had already talked to me about this for years and years. And I told this friend in jail ministry, I said, listen, this, this might wow you a little bit, but I'm telling you, I got this from God. When you're ministering in that jail and you know what kind of a crowd that is and they said yeah and I said well you got to understand this I know your heart in these things and you're pure the people that you're ministering to they're rough cobs as we say they're rough and if you don't speak to a lot of them with street language which is what they're used to. They've been raised on that stuff since they were a child. They've never seen anything else. If you don't speak to them in their lingo, which is, there's going to be some cuss, some cussing in there and some rough stuff and stuff you wouldn't say at, at the altar at church necessarily. They're going to they're gonna bracket you between a fruitcake and a, I don't know what, a pansy or a, uh, you think of your own word. Because they're so rough, they don't know that. They can't relate to that in any way, shape, or form. They just, they'll just they think, you know, this, this person is a fruitcake. They won't even understand you. So don't be afraid to do that. Tell that story of Elijah on Mount Carmel at, at least three times to three different groups, individuals, tell them that. That's a sobering story. That fire came down. Trench was full of water. And that fire came down and it licked up the water in the trench. That's fairly uncommon. And the fire hit the altar and everything on the altar and I'm going to say vaporized it. It was gone. You can read the rest of the story. Here I go again. Elijah's come forth. Elijah's, I've been, I've been calling you out. You might say to, uh, I'm calling you to active duty, says the Lord. I'm calling you to active duty. So come on! Come out of your penthouses, your apartment buildings, your caves, your garage, your underground bunker, wherever you are. From the, from the penthouse to the cave, wherever you are. Come forth. We can handle you. Especially those of us that have been tipped off by God to call you out. Come on. Come out. Start blooming. 
Start blooming. Um te ke shins te kitara ka ina mana bar 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 dar akash te shins te kitara kiko te to koi dar yakash. Jemshe mama ra hai e dar dar kotara dar dar koi ina dar baribat dar kotar. Elijahs look around. Look around yourself. Put some effort into it. If you're new at this, and look around. Look at look at many of the people that are in ministry today. Short hairs like myself, long hairs. Guys that look like what we called freaks in the old days when we were half hippies. Um, you know, guys with mohawks, guys with no hawks. You know, they've shaved right to the skin. Uh, look around. There's a wide variety of people out now serving God. And don't don't be using that phrase, oh, well, people think I'm nuts. Don't say that anymore. Next time you get the urge to do that, go look in the mirror and then slap yourself a couple of times and say, don't say that anymore. Don't be running around saying people are going to think I'm nuts. Don't confess that over yourself. Don't. God's raising up an army, I'm telling you, right now. Right here, right now. There's a power surging and pulsating through the earth today that that we have not recognized before. That doesn't mean it wasn't there, but we haven't recognized it before. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. I know a lot, but I don't know everything. And I constantly sit on Daddy's knee, Father God that is, and get it, you know, like, a, I, I like to think of it as I'm like a computer. You know how a computer can update your information in your car, they say, so many times a second. Well, I like to have that attitude that I keep looking over at the Father God and go, got anything? Got anything for me? Like, got anything? Got anything for me? You know, I'm doing my thing, busy with work, whatever. You got anything? Got anything? Got anything for me? All day long. All night long. All the time. Keep checking with him. You could even say this. Keep bugging him. Just bug, 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 bug them all the time. You got anything for me? Got anything for me? Anything you want to update me? You know, like that? That's what I mean by, do you have anything for me? Do you have any information for me? Do you have any, you know, updates, updates, updates? So that keeps you in the know. Sharpen your spirit. Sharpen your mind. Tell somebody about my channel today. Tell somebody about this channel. Say, you got to hear this guy. He's not like most guys that you're seeing lately. Check this guy out. Tell somebody that. Tell at least three people that in the next seven days. Tell them that. Check this guy out. Yeah, tell people. Tell people that. I'm constantly coming across the path of people that just in conversation. I was in conversation with a guy in the last few days. And this guy... The Lord gave me permission to open up pretty good on this guy. I was I was letting I was letting the word out, so to speak. Uh, and the Lord um, said, "Okay, you know, let some more out." You know, like yeah, let some more out. And I said some things. I said some things. And I listened down inside and I said, you know, Lord, how far do I go? And uh, the Lord showed me how to handle that. And then after a while, he said, go ahead and say this. So I said some things to this guy. And of course, I'm watching for his response. I'm real big on response. I'm not going to use up all of the uh, all of the interaction time I'm not going to use it all up talking 
I'm real big on listening to the other guy and see what's on the inside of him or her. And then the Holy Spirit shows how to build on that with the Word, right? So, interacting with this guy, I was surprised. He said some things. Um, he explained some things about his knowledge in the Word that surprised me. It did. It did. But he's not religious. And I've had a pastor talking about me in front of me, saying this to other people. He pointed at me and said, he's the most unreligious guy I've ever met. I'm not interested in worldly religion with all the gobbledygook that's involved in that. I spit on that. That's, that's garbage. The word says your religious traditions have made the word of God of no effect. So if you have the word of God in you, properly, then you will have effect. Do you understand? You will have effect. It was interesting to talk to this young man. I could see, and I had knowings mingled with words of knowledge that I had insights into him and I could see in him the potential for God to really work with this guy I may get back to in a future video about the, the developments of that it was interesting Back to Elijah's. Yeah, Elijah's. There are things, godly things, happening in the earth today that we haven't seen as much of in times past past as we should have hope stay so I, I i'll i'll put a period at the end of that and say this maybe this is a maybe this is a a new track the healing minister oral roberts when he came on the scene in the 40s the church looked at that guy and thought, this guy must be from Mars. Because the healing message to the church back then, it was completely out the lunch. They thought the guy was nuts. Like, as if God's healing anybody. That's what they thought. That's what they said. Well, as if God's healing anybody. You know, like they were just half mortified at such a goofy idea. Well, it, Oral Roberts did very well. His uh, ministry got off the ground, so to speak, very well. At one time, Oral Roberts' name was the second most recognized name on the planet Earth. Start talking when you're sitting around talking, etc. Start talking about miracles miracles mention about you know sister so and so she got healed and the doctor said buy flowers man she's gone and God healed her and start talking about this uh, if I've got this uh, testimony correct because it's over 100 years old but you can, you can look it up. Just look up uh, Azusa Street Miracles. A guy, um, I believe he was working for the railroad. And uh, he got run, his foot was run over by a train and then his foot was chopped off. And he was in the service. And they were praying for people. And uh, the minister 
said to the guy, um, do you believe for a foot, a new foot? I don't know what the guy said. I think the minister said, well, if you believe for a new foot, then take your uh, whatever that device is on the end of the leg that they gave him. Prosthetic, is that the right word? Take that off. And uh, I believe he was doing that as an act of faith that God will now, now that that's gone, God will replace what's missing. And um, that's what happened. I've heard of, well, I've heard of lots of them, but I'm thinking of two. One was the guy's foot was gone, and God put a new foot on the guy. And another one was, it was a guy's arm. There, there, was, a, there was a woman on Sid Roth. The Sid Roth, it's supernatural show. There was a woman on there recently, and she was in a service, and her dad was doing the service. She's still alive. She was there when this happened. And her dad's a butcher. Well, he was working as well as a preacher. And he was working, and he was doing his butcher thing. And when he was doing his butcher thing, you could see him down with a cleaver, and he whacked his finger, and the finger went, where he went the finger. So they picked up the finger and went over to the hospital, and he told them, he said, well, sold it back on. And they go, we can't do that. This was back around, I don't know, probably 1925 or something. I don't know when. And the, the hospital guys told him, well, we, can, we can't do that. In other words, they're not able. They, they don't have the technology, I guess. He said, well, just sew it on. Just sew it on. So they sew it on. And he was doing a service. I think it was that night or the next day. And when he was doing the service, the finger that they had uh, tried to attach, when this guy was preaching, you know, lots of us use our hands like this when we're preaching and, you know, and do like so and, and all that stuff. And the guy was preaching along. When he went like that, the finger fell off. And the finger went flying out into the front row. And there was a quadriplegic sitting in the front row. And when the guy went like that, the finger flew off and hit the quadriplegic in the chest. And it freaked the guy out so bad that, you know, he went, ah, ah, like this and jumped up. You know, to get this spooky finger, because it's a dead thing, like a ghost or something, away from him. And he's standing there, and he realized he got healed. <laughs> and the preacher, he was standing there. The finger went flying. And his daughter, who was on Sid Roth, I saw her in the last three weeks. His daughter said that he was standing there like this. And they saw, everybody that could see, like that were close enough to see, they saw the guy's finger go, you know, like, whoop, right in front of them. And Sid Roth said to the woman, you were there. She goes, yeah, I was there. I think she said she was seven years old or something. She said, yes, I was there. She said, I was seven. And he said, you saw that. And she, she you know, leaned right ahead at Sid and she goes, yes, I was right there. I saw that happen. She said, I saw the finger do that. And another one, I'd have to think of what preacher it was. Prayed for somebody. And they had an eye missing. So they had a, a good eye on the one side. And then on the other side, they had an empty socket. And he prayed over that person. 
And he literally saw it happen. He saw back in the socket, he saw an eye start to form, very small, and then start to form and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And finally it grew right out and matched the other one. It, now, now that person had a perfect pair of eyes. This is what I want you talking about. You got to start talking about this stuff. If you talked about this seven days a week, the level of faith in the earth would be going up like a thermometer, and we're going to start seeing more of these things. Don't just uh, don't just rely on me, and don't put it on Brother Randy. Well, you know, you got faith. You can believe for that stuff. Listen, we have to tap into corporate faith. Believing for a, a new foot, a new arm, uh, a new eyeball in the socket, and we can go on and on and on and on. I, I mentioned about Oral Roberts. Back in the beginning, when he got started in this, the people thought, this is impossible. This guy's from Mars. This is crazy. Well, it sounded wild then, okay? Now, today, if we keep talking about this stuff, talking it up, talking it up, talking it up, it'll generate faith. It'll generate, especially this, Get a load of this word, okay? Take a big deep breath, swallow a couple times. It'll generate expectation. Expectation is colossal. I know in my services that uh, before I walk on the platform or where I'm going to walk to, I know there's expectation there because lots of the people sitting there, they've been told what to expect. What 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 to what? Expect their expectation level. It's already turned on. It's not lying dormant somewhere. It's turned on. So talk about these things that I'm talking about today. Creative miracles. We use that phrase a lot. So talk about creative miracles. One pastor that I know, and I trust this guy, he's been around a long time. He's older than me. He's been around. He's He has enormous experience too. And he said, listen, in the early church, this thing about, uh, you know, somebody had an accident, maybe with an ax, and they whacked off an arm. He said in the early church, it was standard procedure. Just go see the, go go to the church. Go over to the church. Some guy's got an appendage whacked off. They're, they were trained. Go to the church. That's where you go for something like that. That's where you go. Let me say it like that. That's where you go. That's where you go for help. That's where you go. And I can just hear some of his. You should have heard the stuff that Randy, Brother Randy was talking about this week. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? I had a neighbor come over here one time. Pentecostal guy. Minister. And uh, he'd been digging into, he'd been hearing stuff about confession. And he'd come over here, and I knew he had a tummy full of questions when he got here. I could tell that there was something that was just, oh, he was just busting buttons. He wanted to ask me about this. So there was a bunch of small talk, and then, <laughs> and then finally, you know, all the peripheral dialogue had kind of started to go away. And he goes, uh, hey, do you think there's anything to this confession stuff? And when he said that, I did what I always do. I stayed quiet. 
I'm not going to answer fast just to please that one, you or that one. I'm going to get it from the Holy Ghost before I open my mouth. He says, hey, do you think there's anything to this confession stuff? So he stood there and looked at him. And I said what the Lord told me to say. I looked him right, right in the eyes and I said, I said, uh, there's everything to this confession stuff. Oh, like this. And then he just changed the subject. That answer from the Holy Spirit, I recognized on the spot. That answer was too strong for him. That medicine, it was too strong. He was choking a bit, so to speak. So he had to drop it on the spot and then go and regroup and deal with it. That's what happened there. Talk about these things. Talk about them deliberately. Bring it up. You can let a subject lie or you can bring it up. So bring it up. Talk about it. Even if it's a little bit of a square peg in a round hole in some situations, well, so what? Bring it up. Bring it up and talk about it. God will bless you. He'll bless all the work of your hands. He'll bless all the work of your tongue. Step up out of mind that I question. Skidded a kick of coin, mama, mama. The anointing breaks the yoke. Now available, Randy Varsava's book, Where's My Harvest? Full of godly principles and testimonies. Where's My Harvest will help you build your faith to receive God's abundance in your life. Also available are Patty Varsava's three books in the Today's Virtuous Woman series. Books one and two will encourage you in your walk with God as a virtuous woman, based on Proverbs 31. Book 3 is a cookbook full of delicious recipes along with uplifting scriptures. All these books are conveniently available online at Amazon.